So we've finished the first three representations, the uh, impulse response, connection vectors, and the polynomial uh, representation. And now we go into the last three. And the last three are really important for understanding how our decoder works. So using this representation of the encoder it leads us to the implementation of the decoder. So the implementation of an encoder is simple. It's uh, this shift register, very, very simple, uh, very cost effective. Now, for the decoder, things get much, much trickier. So the first um, concept that's very important to understand about convolutional encoding is the interpretation of the encoder as a finite state machine. So when I talk about a finite state machine, what's the definition of a finite state machine? The output at a certain time is a function of the contents of the registers. And we call that the state of the registers, which is why we have this word state here and state here. So the state of the registers essentially determines what the output is going to be. So the encoding process you can think of as being a transition from one state to another state. So we're going to think about the encoder stepping through different states based on looking at what are the, the, uh, enters, uh, the entries of the shift register. Of course, the number of shift registers is finite, which is why we have a finite state machine. So we'll start with what we call a state diagram for a finite state machine. And surprise, surprise, it's related to this uh, represent, vector representation of the encoder. And this is going to be the finite state machine. And I'm going to um, build it for you so you can understand how we ended up here. Uh, how these things are uh, related. So we'll start um, in the first step. When we build a state diagram, a finite state machine, uh, we're looking at this idea of having a state and then an input buffer. So the state in this example that we've been doing is 2 because uh, the number of registers, um, k, is the constraint length. And it is equal to the number of registers. And in the registers, one of them is always the input buffer, which means that 2 to the k minus 1 is the uh, number of states, because k minus 1 is, are the number of uh, registers in the state. So in our example, the constraint length is 3 because we have three registers. The first register is the input buffer, which means we have k minus 1, in this case 2, uh, which are the number of registers dedicated to the state of the state machine. Now, because we're doing binary, those states could be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, or 1, 1. So there are 2 to the k minus 1 states in a binary. Of course, if small k were bigger than that, uh, then, then, then the number of states would be larger. But this is for um, the binary case we're examining. So now we know how big, how, how many states are there? Well, there's four in our example. So I have four boxes because I have four states. So that's the first part of building the state diagram. Next, I say, well, each one of those states, what am I going to label them? Well, I'm going to label them with what the possible values are at that state. For instance, it could be 0, 0, and I'm going to call that state A. The two registers could be 0, 1, I'll call that state C. 1, 0, state B, and finally 1, 1 will be uh, state D. So there are four states. I could call them A, B, C, D. I could call them 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, but they're just names. They're just states. Uh, so it's an abstraction of the mathematics that's going on behind it. Now, the next step is to establish valid transitions. Now, I have a shift register, which means I shift things in. So that means that the next state cannot just be random, right? The next state, this, in this case, this one is going to shift over to that one. So for sure, there's a structure that is due to the fact that I have a shift register. And that is what we see on these transitions from one state to the next. Now I have a binary input, 
which means that there could be two inputs that determine the next state. So going back again, here I have my input buffer. If the input has a zero, when I shift everything, it'll be a zero that moves into this position. If my input is a one, then it'll be a one that moves into the first of the register in the state. So the input can be binary, so that means there's two binary transitions which are possible for each one, uh, for, for each instant of time. So I'm going to use solid lines to represent what happens when the input bit was a zero, and I'm going to use dashed lines to represent what happens when the input bit is a one. Uh, so let's look at what these transitions could be. Uh, for instance, let me take an example. Certainly, if I'm at 0, 0, and that my input buffer is another 0, when I shift, I'm going to get 0, 0 again, which is why what we see here is we circle right back. If I'm at state A and I input a 0, I'm going to get the state again. So what happens when I'm at 1, 1? So my registers are... 1, 1. My input here, let's say it's a 0 again. So when it shifts, I'm going to get a 0, 1. So that means when I see the input of a 0 bit now, what I'm doing is I'm looking here, and now this is the transition. I'm going to go from D, this is state D, and this is state C. So what I do is I look at just the, the shift register, and I say there are certain valid transitions with this arrangement of shift registers. And so this is pretty standard. I haven't really assigned a code to it yet. This is just the number of registers. This is just the constraint length gives me all of this diagram. The constraint length tells me, oh, I'm going to have to build a diagram, and it's going to look like this. So the next part is to actually introduce the code. So the structure of the state diagram determined just by the constraint length. But now I have a spe specific code that I'm interested in. So I have a vector, or a collection of vectors, which represent the, the code. Now what I do is I write next to each one of these valid transitions, next to each valid transition, I'm going to write what is the code word that is involved in that transition. Remember, if I have a transition, let's say the transition from A to B, A transiting to B. That means, I, I, I know what that means. That means that I was at 0, 0, and uh, the transition to B is a dotted line, so that's a 1. So I know the three registers. If I know the three registers, then I can calculate what is the code word. Well, it's a 1 plus 0 plus 0, that gives me a 1, and it's a 1 plus 0 plus 0, that gives me 1, 1, poof, which is what I see here, right next to this transition from A to B, I wrote what the output of the encoder would be. So I do that for every single transition on this state diagram. I just do the math, and I figure out for that transition, what's inside the registers, based on what's inside the registers, what is the code word that's generated. So I populate this state diagram with the output for this particular code. So that's what changes from one code to the next, is what I'm writing next to each one of these transitions. Now we're going to return to our original example, and we're going to um, see what happens. Well, let, let's say, for instance, that we're starting at state 1, 0, and that we're going to put in something. So that means we're starting at state B. 1, 0 here, that means state B. So I'm starting at state B, just for example. And the next state is 0. Let's say I shift in a 0. Well, I look here. That's the transition with a solid line, and I see that if I have the solid line, I go from B to C. So I follow through that. I know that the next state will be 0, 1, because I just take that 0, I shift it, and then this 1 gets shifted, and I know I'm going to have a 0, 1. Now, the output from this transition would be 1, 0. So that's what's written here, 1, 0. This transition outputs 1, 0. How did I get that 1, 0? Well, it's because I took register 1, 2, and 3, uh, 1, 2, and 3, add them up, and I got a 1. And for the second code bit, I took register 1 and register 3, these two one, zeros, and that gave me a 0. So again, this is how I populated that. But instead of doing the calculation every time, 
I just know whenever I go from B to C, that output's a 1, 0. So I don't have to go through all the math. I just need this register, this um, finite state machine representation, in order to do the encoding. So it's less complex. This is a table that you find in your textbook that shows uh, the um, encoding of a message. And I just want to uh, show you how you can interpret this table, which is static, and to try and look at it in terms of the, the, what's going on dynamically inside of the finite state machine. So for instance, we're starting at the initial state of zero. So remember, you have to initialize it. So I'm assuming that my registers are initialized at zero. And then I input a one. I shift in a one. So if I shift in a one, that means I'm going on the dotted line. I see the blue dotted line there. I'm going from A to state B. Along the way, when I'm doing this transition, I look outside and it's generating a one one. Okay, so now I'm at state B. And what happens to state B, I input the uh, next uh, code word, uh, the next message bit. In this case, it's a one. So I look at the transition and I see that on that transition, the code word that would be output would be a zero one. Uh, so there I see the output of my encoder, zero one. And of course, I'm going from state B to state D. Um, so you can see in the table, he's just listing the uh, states one after the other. Now the next bit input is a zero. Again, I'm looking for the solid line transition, and that takes me from D to the state C, and the output along the way is a zero one. So I can continue to step through uh, the encoding of this sequence of data bits. So now I'm to state C. From state C, I input a one. I go along the dotted line to state B. Along the way, I'm outputting a zero, zero as the code word. Now I'm at state B. I shift in my new word, which is uh, my new bit. My data bit is a one, so I follow the dotted line, which takes me from B to D. And along the way, I see that the code word output is zero, one. And from there, uh, I, I've, I've got my sequence here, output. So this is a little longer example of a longer uh, message sequence. And this is the coded output sequence that I get out of my decoder. So we can see that, you know, looking at this table, it's kind of hard to see what's going on. But when we look at the state machine, the finite state machine, it's very clear uh, how we're moving around. And the uh, calculation is, is, is really just a lookup table about what the code words are for different transitions. So this was nice, but I had to stand here and step you through this. Suppose I wanted you to uh, be able to visualize at once this uh, flow in time, sort of like a graph versus time. How would I do that? 